Conference play is in full swing, and Aggie basketball is on a roll. Today on New Mexico State Sports Weekly, we'll take a look at the top 10 plays from the eventful and emotional week for Aggie basketball. Head men's coach Marvin Menzies will stop by to break down his team's recent conference road games and also discuss his team's upcoming home games. Meanwhile, women's head coach Mark Track will join us in the studio to recap his team's two big home wins, propelling the Aggies to a 3-0 start in WAC play. Coach will also help us preview his team's upcoming road games this week. Aggie basketball has combined to win 15 of their last 17. We recap their success on today's episode of New Mexico State Sports Weekly. Welcome to New Mexico State Sports Weekly. I'm your host, Adam Young. The last week has seen some major success for NM State's women's basketball team, as well as the return of Chile Napawe to the court for your Aggie men's team. Both teams face Bakersfield and Seattle, with the women defeating both WAC opponents at home, and the men's team coming back to Las Cruces with a split. Let's take a look at the top 10 plays from last week. At number 10, it was a big week for Aggie sophomore Brianna Freeman. She scored eight of the team's first 10 points against Bakersfield. Freeman blows by her defender and gets the easy score right here. Freeman finished with a career-high 25 points against the Roadrunners. Number 9. It wasn't a great day shooting for NM State in their six-point loss against Seattle, but sophomore Ian Baker connected on two of the team's three trays. Baker dials up long distance on this one. His shooting wasn't enough, though, as the Aggies fell on the road to Seattle. Number 8. Despite being down four points at the half, New Mexico State women's basketball used a big comeback to take down Seattle over the weekend. This late three-pointer from sophomore Mariah Mack gave the Yankees a 10-point lead. Mack finished one rebound shy of her second straight double-double. Checking in at number seven, welcome back Chile Napawe. After missing significant time due to injury, Chile returned with force last week. This was one of two blocks for the big fella against Seattle. Number six. NM State women's basketball continues to force turnovers. Late against Seattle, junior Sasha Weber forces a steal, receives the pass on the other end, and converts for two of her game-high 15 points against the Red Hawks. Number five, Juco transfer Shanice Davis scores one of her many baskets in her 32-point outburst against Bakersfield. Davis became just the 18th player in school history to score 32 in a game. Number four in our top plays. Chile uses his force in the interior at Seattle to score around multiple defenders. Napawe finished with a double-double after playing 25 minutes in the ball game. A good sign of things to come. Number three. In the midst of a big comeback against Bakersfield, Shanice Davis nails a huge three with 90 seconds left to go. The Davis three brought the Yankees within one, helping the Yankees get the eventual comeback win. At number two, Pascal Siakam has been a highlight reel waiting to happen this season. On this play, the redshirt freshman goes over a defender to slam one home. Siakam finished with a team high 17 against Seattle. And at number one on our list, Trailing by two points in the final 12 seconds after a Bakersfield made free throw, Shanice Davis goes the length of the court and escapes a double team on the baseline to find teammate Brianna Freeman wide open underneath. Freeman scores with two seconds left to go in the Aggies forced overtime. NM State dominated the extra period and they took down Bakersfield by 12. When we return, head men's basketball coach Marvin Menzies will join me to break down his team's recent road trip to Bakersfield and Seattle. Stay tuned. This is New Mexico State Sports Weekly. We all we all love each other, you know, like uh, like we all brothers pretty much, and uh, we all support each other. And you know, when I was out, like you know, even though I was going through a hard time, like it was kind of it's it's always fun being around everybody. And you know they keep, you know they keep, we keep lifting each other, and everybody just happy to you know to have us back. You know I mean even the the freshmen, everybody just happy to 
have me and Moss back. Your Aggie men's basketball team has returned from their first WAC road trip. NM State cruised to a win at Bakersfield before falling in a close one at Seattle. The Aggies now return home for three straight games at the friendly confines of the Pan American Center. Joining me now in studio is head men's basketball coach Marvin Menzies. Coach, a split on the road. What changed offensively for your team from Thursday to Saturday? You know, that's a good question. We, we went back, looked at film, and really thought about it. And we just didn't make shots. That was at the end of the day. We felt like we had good looks. We felt like we put our guys in position to have good looks. Um, we were very efficient uh, on the inside once we got a good touch uh, on the interior. I think we were, after we statted it out, we were like 78% with either a, a positive result, whether it was a, we got fouled or we made a bucket on inside touches um, and and only about 14 or whatever it was uh, percent is the other way. Um, so it was just one of those deals where you just, you just, you know, you, you look back at it and you go, well, obviously we, you can't throw it in every single time, but that was the recipe for success when you're not making jumpers and, uh, and we didn't make jumpers that night. Senior big man Chile Napawe returned last week, played a little bit Thursday, mm -hmm. then played 25 minutes Saturday and recorded right. a double-double. Right. Is he 100% back now? You know, he's 100% back, uh, but he's still not 100%. Uh, and, you know, he just doesn't have the lift yet. Um, and he's, you know, the, the push-off is there, but he doesn't have the strength behind it. Lateral quickness is there, but it's not as efficient as it was, you know, before he went down. So those are things that, that are... are Good and bad, you know, mm -hmm. good, I got good news and I got bad news. You know, good news, we got him back, bad news, he's not 100%. So, uh, but we're happy to have him back. It was felt really good after the game, to, both games, to just see him playing. Uh, you know, he's such a great kid and great mm -hmm. human being and just, he's such an Aggie and he's, you know, it's just, I was, it was just a hurt to watch him not be able to be involved. And so, uh, just to see him in the locker room and participating in the timeouts and all of that was really, really nice. So. So we're feeling good, you know, we, we didn't get the win. Obviously, that's why you play the games or one of the reasons you play the games. But um, at the end of the day, you know, great kids, great locker room after guys are guys are still very optimistic. They were down and hurt that they didn't get the win. But but I know that, you know, it's one of those types of things that will hopefully be motivating for them going forward and it's, uh, especially into this week. With Chile back now, how does that change the complexion of your team? Well, you know, we, we were, had designed, I think you and I had talked off camera a little bit about the dynamics of our offense and defense with, with, uh, with the big lineup and playing three, three guys of significant size and, and even the subs coming in with some length and Jalen and Matt. And so, you know, playing the two guards is probably the way we're going to go a little bit and, and already having that preparation in. Um, it won't change it too much from a system standpoint. Uh, just from a, a depth and a, and a rotation standpoint, it'll it'll give us girth in those areas. You held Seattle to 58 points on their home court. Were right. you satisfied with your team's defensive effort? No, we're satisfied with the overall number, the final number we gave them. But it, but they still shot 51 percent. Uh, they found seams, they found creases in the zone. Uh, some of the, the the nuances of the zone are new for some of the guys that that are learning it right now, the way that we're playing it. And so there so there was some missed opportunities there but for the most part they made shots you know they played well they just beat us I mean they you know some some nights you go back you look at film and you go you know they were better than us tonight and uh you know I don't think I've ever lost to them so you know I guess they, they were due and uh hopefully we'll get another streak going against them when we return coach and I will preview this week's home games against Grand Canyon and Utah Valley we hope you stay with us this is New Mexico State Sports Weekly the Aggie men's basketball team will tip off against WAC leader Grand Canyon and Utah Valley this week in the Pan American Center. The two games this week start off a three-game homestand for the Aggies. Here to talk about those games is head men's basketball coach Marvin Menzies. Dan Marley's Lopes on Thursday. They lead the WAC. What has made them so good? Dan, you know, he's, he's doing a fantastic job. He really is. Um, you know, I don't know him that well. He's very pleasant when I had a chance to have a few brief uh, encounters with them, but you know, just understanding um, from the outside looking in, or you know, as much as I can understand from the outside looking in, it just seems like he's doing things the right way. He's bringing in great kids. Uh, we lost out on a kid, uh, Josh Braun, uh, that they ended up signing, who's playing great ball for him right now as a freshman, a redshirt freshman. Um, 
and he's just you know he's doing uh, he's doing it the right way. He's playing big time teams early and, and and taking some losses like us, but getting his guys experience. He's keeping them optimistic towards towards their goals that they can achieve this year. But inevitably, he's keeping the big picture in sight with with their goals to reach the NCAA tournament. Um, uh, he's he's uh, I think just caused a lot of excitement in, you know in the city. Uh, big time name, you know, great player. Uh, you know, great resume. He's invested into the city with the restaurants and businesses. And so it's just a, you know, I thought it was a great hire and I think he's doing a good job so far. I think that's really the, the key behind it. And they, and they have a high level of investment into the program. Because they lead the WAC and because you have them at home, does this game have a greater meaning? Well, I think they all have a real significant meaning. If you have a chance to, to win it and you're picked to win it, then every game is, is, is huge. I mean, the Seattle loss, was huge. I mean, it was it was a it was a loss where you go, okay, man, that's one way right there. You know, we should be able to hopefully pull that one out. So you hope it doesn't come back to bite you in the butt later. Um, but it's one of those games that that also is you put behind you quickly and you look forward to the, to the next one. And and the next one is Grand Canyon. Is it bigger than uh, than any other game? I, you know, I don't know. I mean, if you win that and when you lose the next one, then which one is bigger? Well, they're both L's. You know, at the end of the day. Um, so the, so the key is to get two W's, and that's, and, that's, and that's why they're both big. Second game of the homestand, you have Utah Valley, a program you've had some really tight games against. Right. Mm -hmm. but they've struggled so far this year. Are you surprised by that? No, um, they lost a lot. You know, they lost some, they lost some key players. I mean, uh, uh, Holton, his, uh, uh, Dick's son, was, I mean, he, he was underrated. I, I thought he was uh, a really, really tough, heady um, you know, leader on that team. And they lost a couple other guys that, you know, a really good shooter, a great post player for them at, that, at, this, at this level. Um, so I knew they were going to take a while to, to get in gear. But, but watching some of their games, you know, I said they're in games, they're right there. But that, that full team experience uh, that, that's not there, that was there last year, winning all those close games on the road last year in conference, doesn't exist right now. So yeah, they're going to have some. They're going to take their, their their bumps and bruises a little bit, but they're going to learn from this. And, and I think they do have a lot of talent. And I do think they'll be a team to to to, to reckon with towards towards the latter part of conference and into the WAC tournament. Injury wise, you got Napaway back during the last road trip. You still have Molings and Bular out. What's mm -hmm. the status of those two? Well, Daniel is better, uh, much better, and we're optimistic we'll get him back real soon. Um, actually. It may be as, as, as early as tonight. Um, uh, Tanvir is a little bit uh, further along. Uh, I'm not, not further along, but f further away from playing, I would say. If I had to guess another week or so, it's just kind of a, a – it's clinical at this point. It's a matter of what he can take and, 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 and feel, but uh, we're not going to put him out there until he's ready. Come out to the Pan American Center this week as the Aggies battle the Lopes and Wolverines in WAC play. Good luck this week, Coach. All right, thanks, Adam. When we return, head women's basketball coach Mark Track will join me in the studio to recap his team's continued success in conference play. Stay with us. This is New Mexico State Sports Weekly. Your Aggie women's basketball team is on a six-game win streak after f defeating two WAC opponents this past week. The Aggies have now won 10 of the last 11 games and are 3-0 in the WAC for the first time since 2008. Joining me now to break down the great week is head women's basketball coach Mark Track. Coach, another positive week with two more wins. What was your biggest takeaway from last week? You know, it, I, my biggest takeaway is how resilient and determined the kids were. We were 20 points down against, against the best team in the conference uh, with 10 minutes to go in the game. And the kids never quit. They never hung their heads. They kept fighting uh, possession after possession. And then, you know, we were struggled a little against Seattle, you know, after the big win. I don't know, we might have had a hangover. But again, we, you know, it was just possession after possession. And we finally pulled away by about 10, 12 points at the end of the game. So I think it was the de their determination and their resiliency and the fact that they're not going to quit. Shanice Davis was outstanding, 32 against Bakersfield, nearly a double-double against Seattle. Easy choice for player of the week. 
What did you see from her last week? Yeah, I saw someone that ran the team. Uh, she scored. She, she, she uh, helped us win in two different ways. Uh, against Bakersfield, she had the 32 points, a very high shooting percentage, big time clutch shots. Mm -hmm. and against Seattle, she set her teammates up with the assist. She played a great floor game. She wasn't shooting as well, but she, she defended, she rebounded, you know, she got those eight assists. So I think she's really, I, I think that's the difference in this year and last year's team is we've got a point guard that makes everybody better around them. And that's really, really important to have a point guard like that. A 3-0 start now in WAG play for the first time since 2008. What does that mean to you? You know, it just means that we've uh, we've got 11 games left. You know, it's 3-0. It's better than being 0-3, but we've got a long way to go. You know, the, um, you could we could win every game in, in the conference. We could lose every game in the conference. I mean, we don't have much margin for error. we got to just play hard every game, take it a possession at a time. But at this point, it just means that, that, that we're 3-0, and and, and uh, we just need to keep working hard and, and uh, see if we can take this intensity and this resiliency on the road with us. Bakersfield had a really good non-conference. They were the preseason pick to win the WAC. Does that make that win against them a little greater? Yeah, you know, they were the 17th ranked mid-major team in the country, according to one publication. They had beaten Arizona at Arizona, you know, pack, a Pac-12 team. They'd beaten Hawaii. They'd had some quality wins. Uh, so it was, a, it was a big win for us, and it was, uh, you know, I don't know if it was so much a statement win, but it, it was a big win, and, and um, you know, I don't know if they suffered a hangover because they went to Texas Pan Am two nights later and lost by 17 there. So mm -hmm. um, it was it was it was really, really a, the whole weekend was big for us. You've won 10 of 11 now. How have you seen your team's confidence grow from week to week? You know, it's growing. You know, we, we are 0 and 5, but, you know, people you know, talk about the 0 and 5 starts, you know, except mm -hmm. for, uh, for Boise State, all those games were close. You know, we, we could have won those. So we weren't, you know, we went to UTEP and, uh, and lost a close game that we could have won. You know, Sac State, uh, Weaver State, we were up by 14 of about three and a half minutes to go in the game and really gave that one away. So it wasn't that we really, so I knew that we, we had it. We just had to start executing down mm -hmm. the stretch. Um, we, has, we had to start, to, you know, uh, time management you know we had to start playing defense a lot you know we changed it we tweaked the system a little a little but I, I, didn't, I never panicked when we were at 0 and 5 and and uh, I don't know if we're as bad as 0 and 5 I don't know if we're as good as 10 out of our last 11 mm -hmm. I just do do know that we're getting better and better in all aspects of the game how do you keep this streak rolling here on the road uh, just do what we're doing uh, we'll take it a possession at a time and defense I mean I, we force I think we're the uh, 25th ranked team as far as forced turnovers uh, in the country, which is which is pretty as far as steals uh, in the country, uh, which is really really good. So uh, we just got to keep on defending. We got to take the we got to do three things on the road: defend, rebound, and make free throws. We had we didn't make free throws at home mm -hmm. this past weekend. I think things were a little bit easier, but we got to defend, we got to rebound, uh, we got to make free throws, and we got to bring it bring a toughness on the road that we showed at home. When New Mexico State Sports Weekly returns, Coach and I will discuss his team's upcoming road games against Grand Canyon and Utah Valley. We'll be right back. The Aggie women's basketball team will look to extend their winning streak this week when they travel to Phoenix, Arizona and Orem, Utah for road games against Grand Canyon and Utah Valley. Here with me in the studio is NM State head coach Mark Track. Coach, you have a couple on the road now, three straight away from home. Is your confidence greater on the road now because you've won two straight away games? I think it's greater because we won at Southern, U uh, Southern Utah and then uh, we won at UMKC. Um, Southern Utah is a, is a very, very good team that was undefe undefeated at home when we beat them. I think those two road wins is what gives us confidence because you win at home, you know, a lot of people play better at home. But the fact that we played so well in those two games uh, on the road, I think that's going to give us confidence now to, to, to play these two games. They know they've already won on the road. They've won against a quality team. They know they can do it. Your first opponent is Grand Canyon on Thursday. They won 21 games last season, WBI team, but they lost all five starters. What have you seen from them so far this season? You know, I, they, uh, they played their last game, you know, really tough, and I think they're improving. And I, I think at this point, you throw out the record and you see how the team's been playing recently. Like Seattle is 4-14, four and 14, but their last two recent games were, were, were pretty good before they played us. They blew out Utah Valley at home. So it's what they've done recently, and Grand Canyon's been playing well recently. And you know what? Anybody can beat us mm -hmm. in this conference, so we've got to be ready. You then finish off the week at Utah Valley. But is it still safe to say that you're just focused on your team and how your team can get better? Yeah, yeah. And Utah Valley, you know, we beat them there in overtime last year. And the only time we took the lead or, or was in overtime, you know, that whole game. So we get it up. But then they came here 
in, uh, and, and they scored more points in, in, in the history of their program against us. And I think the kids got to remember that. I mean, they had role players having double doubles in that game and a kid that averaged eight points a game wind up having 24 against us. So uh, we've got to remember that and we've got to know that that can happen. And that's the kind of thing that we haven't allowed happen defensively this year. And uh, I think we've got to go there and, and have something to prove, especially after they lit us up at home here last year. How can your team get better? And also, is there another level you can get to. Yeah, uh, we can still get better defensively, offensively. I, we've gotten good play out of people, but I, I'll tell you, you know, Zaire William is has not reached the top of her game yet. Cassandra Harris can play. Uh, has not reached the top of her game yet. Bradley Nash is going to start getting some playing time. Our volleyball team. She played very well for us last year, so she's going to start some, getting some playing time. Jazz Rutledge is now back from her injury and will get better and better. So we've got some kids that still can play. Uh, you know, are anywhere near playing their best basketball. If we get everybody playing well together, we could be pretty good. What kind of a luxury is that, Coach, to have so many players that you can play each game? Yeah, and, and you know, on the bench, too, we, we have no problem going, uh, going to Brandy Walton or going to Emily Harden. Mm -hmm. You know, they've, they've really shown well in practice. So it, it's a big luxury knowing that we've got a lot of, we have about 10, 12 players that can go in at any time during the game. Log on to nmstatesports.com to keep up with your Aggies as they continue conference play on the road this week. Good luck this week, Coach. Thank you. Tickets for men's and women's basketball are on sale. To be part of the excitement, call the Aggie Ticket Office at 575-646-1420. You can also get your tickets online at nmstatesports.com or ticketmaster.com. If you missed any part of today's show, check us out on YouTube. And also be sure to stay up to speed on social media by liking New Mexico State Athletics on Facebook and following us on Twitter. Another episode of New Mexico State Sports Weekly is in the books. I'm Adam Young saying thank you for watching and go Aggies.